Okay, hi there. Welcome to another in our series of topic revision multiple choice quizzes. Uh, we're going to take a topic, this time elasticity of demand and supply. And I've got six past exam questions for you to have a go at. Great chance to test your understanding on this important uh, topic in microeconomics. As always, if you need to take a moment to think about the answer, just press the pause button and press play again when you want to walk through the answer together. Here we go. Here's our first question. A clothing company currently sells its shirts at £25 a shirt and each year £2 million are purchased. Market research has found that the coefficient of elasticity of demand is 2 or minus 2. What will be the effect on the firm's total revenue uh, from selling shirts of lowering their price to £20? So you need to do a calculation here. So press the pause button, have a go at the question and uh, let's walk it through together when you're ready. So they cut the price from 25 to 20, uh, which uh, is obviously a £5 or 20% cut in price. You know that the elasticity of demand is 2. The question is, what's the effect on revenue? The correct answer here is C. So a 20% fall in price means that sales will rise by 40%. From and 40% initially, they're selling 2 million, that will go up to 2.8 million. They were selling 2 million shirts at 25 pounds a pop, 50 million revenue. They're now selling 2.8 million, obviously at a lower price, 20 pounds, but that actually increases their revenue from 50 million to 56 million, a gain of 6 million pounds. Question number two a new high definition TV or an exotic holiday? might be considered a luxury good. Which of the following values represents the income elasticity of demand for luxury goods such as the ones mentioned in the question? Well, the answer is either A, B, C or D. Just to help you out there, what do you reckon the answer is, please, to question two? So income assist demand, of course, talks about things like inferior goods, normal necessities, and also normal luxuries, where the demand for the product is quite highly sensitive to a change in income, and the coefficient for income elasticity of demand has to be greater than plus one. So the correct answer here is 1.9. A and B would be inferior goods, because they have a negative coefficient of YD and C would be a normal necessity. Uh, demand does go up as income rises but, but not by as much as the change in income. Question 3, a bit wordy but uh, let's work it through. Question 3, product R is an inferior good with no close substitutes. It's also a complement to product S. Which of these gives the best description of product R? Take a moment to read through the options, press the pause button, have a go please, at question number three. Okay, so let's work it through. Product R is inferior, so therefore it must have a negative income elasticity, so the answer must be A or C, I think. It's also a complement to product S. Well, the cross-price elasticity of two complements is always negative, so therefore the answer must be a, working through knowledge of the different signs of income elasticity and cross price elasticity. Question four, a manufacturer progressively lowers the price of his or her product and the table shows the outcome of this policy, the price falling from $10 to 9 to 8. Uh, but the total revenue stays the same in dollar terms. Therefore, the question is, what is the price elasticity of demand for the product? Is it A, B, C or D? Take a moment please to have a go at question four. So here the firm is lowering the price, uh, but the total revenue or the total spending by consumers remains the same at $750,000. Uh, this implies that demand has a elasticity of one when the demand for a product has a unitary price elasticity, then any change in price leaves total spending other, otherwise known as total revenue unchanged. Two questions to go. I hope you're doing well on these ones. Here we go. The cross price elasticity of demand for bottled water with respect to the price of sugary drinks is found to be plus 0.9. An indirect tax is imposed on sugary drinks, which increases their price by 20%. 
So what will be the expected change in demand for bottled water as a result of this tax? There are your four options. Have a go, please, at question number five. So this question is almost about cross price elasticity. We're told the cross elasticity, uh, the coefficient is 0.9, but it's plus 0.9. And obviously the, the sugar tax has increased the price of sugary drinks. People shifting, substituting or switching their demand away from sugary drinks to bottled drinks. Correct answer here is B. Substitutes have a positive cross price elasticity demand. And if the tax increases the price of sugar drinks by 20%, we'd expect the demand for bottled drinks to increase by 0.9 of 20%, which is plus 18%. And here's our last question. This is actually about price elasticity of supply. So I thought I'd chuck in one question on that. Here it is. A product is found to have a high price elasticity of supply. So which of those options, A, B, C, or D, might explain it? Have a go, please, at question number six. So this is our last question. Elasticity of supply actually is not always revised very well by students. And uh, it's really quite important to understand the factors that determine the ability of firms to change supply, bring more or less to market when there's a change in demand. And the correct answer here is B. Uh, the, the product is non-perishable. Non-perishable goods are easier and cheaper to store. And a high level of stocks, otherwise known as inventories, helps to make supply elastic if there's a change in demand. So a high level of stocks, due to their non-perishable nature, uh, is a key factor increasing the price elasticity of supply of the product. There we go. Well done. Six multiple choice questions covering elasticities of demand and supply. I hope you found this short video useful. Take care. Stay safe. Catch you all soon.